थैंक यू सर गुड आफ्टरनून सर गुड आफ्टरनून प्लीज सिट डाउन थैंक यू व्हाट इज योर नेम सर माय नेम इज शारदा गजानन माध्यस्वर सो मिस शारदा फोर अटेम्प्ट्स यस सर इज इट योर फर्स्ट यूपीएससी इंटरव्यू और यस अर्लीर आल्सो यू हैव गॉन फर्स्ट वन सर प्लीज टेल अस अबाउट योरसेल्फ गुड आफ्टरनून सर्स माय नेम इज शारदा गजानन माध्यस्वर आई कम फ्रॉम चंद्रपुर डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ महाराष्ट्र where i did my basic schooling and after that i went to sangli to alsan college of engineering to pursue btech in electrical engineering and after that sir i am preparing for uh, civil services examination since 2019 since you are from maharashtra please tell us the history of maharashtra and the sir maharashtra is one of the very rich uh, state of india in terms of history as well as in terms of economy it traces its root to the valor and bravery of the chhatrapati shivaji who ruled for uh, briefly for 6 years but uh, it uh, went on to bring the very great uh, historical significance to the state of maharashtra so it was from 1674 to 1680 okay so before that uh, maharashtra had no history No sir, it was but sir the Chhatrapati Shivaji who established the first uh, Maratha uh, empire. Okay. So he went on to write the important significance to the history of Maharashtra. Okay. And after that sir, the roots are uh, carried forward with the valor and bravery of Chhatrapati Shahu. And apart from that, Chhatrapati uh, Chhatrapati Shahu has uh, did the great work for the upliftment of the lower people, lower caste people. by giving the one of the earliest uh, affirmative action policies in terms of education mm. and in terms of government jobs sir. and apart from that sir uh, the history of maharashtra also uh, lies with the importance of the sugarcane cooperatives uh, which has been one of the uh, success stories of india and sir it is one of the leading uh, state in terms of cotton production as well Political science and international relations is subject. Please tell us the landmarks in India's foreign policy since independence. Sir, the uh, foreign policy landmarks would start from the very first Prime Minister of India, Pandit Nehru, who went on to establish idealism in the foreign policy. Uh, so, sir, that could be traced with India with the idea of support of India for the United Nations. which is in terms of collective security establishment and after that sir uh, with the advent of prime minister indira gandhi there could be seen a significant shift in the foreign policy with the adoption of realism uh, which could be seen by signing of the india ussr friendship treaty going for the first nuclear test in pokhran and apart from that sir india in the 21st century went on to become uh, one of the major power and uh, claiming its uh, rightful place in the committee of nation it is not just a rule taker but also a rule maker uh, with the successful g20 presidency sir your father is a banker in which bank does he work uh, regional rural bank sir gramin bank Could you tell me how many banks are there in India? Grand total, any idea? Sir, so public sector banks are twelve banks, and regional rural banks are forty-three banks, sir. How oh, about there are non-public sector banks also in the urban area? How many yes, are there? Yes, uh, sorry, any sir, I'm not. How are okay? How has the functioning of banks changed over the last two decades? Tell me the points. Uh, sir over the last two decades india has significantly went on for many structural reforms in the banking sector uh, one of them sir has been the uh, merger of the public sector banks so as to rationalize their work working and functioning okay. uh, that was based on the recommendation of pj nayak committee okay and after that sir uh, there was a very significant step in terms of establishing insolvency and bankruptcy code Uh, so as to ensure the non performing assets are within the very controllable limit okay and after that sir uh, india is pursuing many policies like jandhan and all uh, for ensuring the uh, financial inclusion uh, reaches to yes, every jandhan only in the public sector banks or in the private banks also uh, 
Uh, sir, it is for all the banks, uh, as far as I can remember, sir. Okay. Sir, this, these are the significant steps. These are the changes. Yes. Okay. Now, my last question is, please describe to us the internal security situation of India. Uh, sir, there are uh, two, three challenges to internal security situation. Very first is, sir, the left-wing extremism. And according to recent reports, as far as I remember, sir, there are 43 affected districts in India, uh, which are uh, uh, facing the left-wing extremism. And apart from that, sir, there is increasing insurgency in the states of northeastern region, as well as there is Khalistani insurgency in the Punjab, as well as in North, uh, as well as in Jammu and Kashmir. And apart from that, sir, there are uh, misuses and misinformation uh, circulated through the social media and the uh, normal media platforms. No, which is in Punjab, there is no Khalistan movement at all. Uh, sir, uh, in terms of, I am saying, uh, there are many instances where the Khalistani separatism is being uh, carried on uh, through no, the no, parties no, from no. Canada. No, that's Canada, yes, not, yes. not Punjab. And in north, northeastern India, in which states is there insurgency? Uh, sir, Nagaland is one of the significant states. By which Na group the insurgency is? Naga there? insurgency by NSCM, Naga Socialist Council movement, sir. But there's a ceasefire agreement for the last 20 years, 22, 26 years by the, the government of India. Uh, there's sir, no violence at all. Uh, sir, in the ceasefire agreement. Indeed, there is a ceasefire agreement, sir, but not all the groups are party to the ceasefire agreement as far Even as I Even if they are not, yes. there is no violence at all in Nagaland. Okay, sir, I will go and read through it once again, sir. Thank you. Yes, thank you, sir. <coughs> Ms. Sharda, yes. tell us about uh, the worldly paintings that you, you paint yourself. Yes, sir. <coughs> what are these paintings? So, Varli painting is one of the folk art of the Varli tribe in Maharashtra. It uh, basically resembles the uh, nature worship and animal worship of the tribe. And it revolves around the representation of the, all the natural elements of the nature uh, through the geometric shapes. And that is mostly done on the occasion of festivals or weddings. So, did you learn it or is it a hobby? Uh, I did not learn it, sir. It eventually became a hobby. And are there special occasions when you paint? Uh, n there are no special occasions as such. I paint whenever I feel so, so. Okay. And how many paintings have you made? Uh, I have made uh, nearly 10, 15 paintings, sir. Uh, initially, I started from the A4 size sheets and went on to paint on the canvas and the cloth. Good. Yes. Tell us the various art forms of India. Uh, so art forms in uh, like well, paintings. Paintings. Okay. So uh, the yeah, Burli is a tribal art form. Yes, sir. Maharashtra. What yes. about Andhra Pradesh, Gujarat, Haryana? Uh, sir, yes. Uh, there is Kalamkari painting practiced in the state of Andhra Pradesh. That's right. And apart from that, sir, uh, the uh, Kaligat painting, which is practiced in the state of West Bengal, uh, then Patachitra art, uh, which is practiced in the state of Odisha. Then the uh, Fud painting, which is practiced in the state of Rajasthan, uh, and many gold painting is also there, sir. Gujarat, your neighboring state? Uh, sorry, sir, I am unable to read. Pithora paintings. Pithora, right, sir. Okay, what do you understand by DPI, Digital Public Infrastructure? <coughs> uh, sir, Digital Public Infrastructure is a very uh, ambitious move by the government to ensure that the uh, services of government are provided through digital infrastructure to all the people and there is digital inclusion as well. In, it, uh, examples? Uh, sir, there is UPI, Unified Payment Interface for Transactions. Apart from that, there is a COVID platform which uh, government came up during the COVID-19 for providing vaccinations. And uh, this too, I am unable to... ONDC? Sir, I am unable no to... No idea. No, sir. Okay. <coughs> you see, this uh, FTA, which India signed with the European Free Trade Association, EFTA, mm -hmm. tell us something about it. Uh, sir, this uh, EFTA is one of the very uh, uh, significant move by the India because it has been in the pipeline since 2004. 
and sir the european free trade association emerges as one of the very significant markets for india to establish its roots in europe uh, and uh, there has been uh, progress because of the uh, complete uh, continuous efforts by the government to work on ensuring that uh, there is also the investment of dollar 100 billion over the next 15 years so that india also gains from it and there is enough employment creation as well and apart from that sir there would be uh, easy access to markets to for both the countries as the uh, dairy products as well as the uh, some of the dairy products of switzerland would get easy access to india same time there would be easy access for services from indian side towards the european markets where will this 100 billion dollars come into india in the form of investments over the next 15 years who will invest Sir, the companies and the government from these four countries. The governments will invest. Uh, I believe, sir, would go go ahead and invest, <coughs> but I would look into it. Sir. I'm not sure. About okay, the FTA with the EU has yes. been pending again for years and years. Yes, sir. Why is that not coming? Sir, there are some basic loopholes in the uh, signing of the FTAs. Loopholes. Uh, I would say rather obstacles. And what one, are these? Uh, one of them is, sir, there is the clause of data exclusivity in terms of uh, intellectual property rights and if uh, government of india goes on to sign it there would be sir uh, acceptance of international patents in the indian market and that would create some of the troubles for the indian uh, indian uh, sectors and other thing is sir uh, there are strict regulation on uh, uh, flow of data which is considered a new oil so Indian government does not want to expose its uh, data of the Indian people or Indian citizen uh, without any restrictions to the foreign market. And apart so which means from India is not confident? Uh, I would not say, sir, that India is not confident, but uh, there should be subject to some restrictions. Uh, there should be proper bifurcations on uh, types of digital personal data. Thank you. Yes, thank you, sir. Ms. Shardar, yes, sir. I see from your jab that you won the first prize in Envisage India competition in 2015. That yes. was at school level. Uh, sir, the first year of graduation, sir. First year of yes. yes. And then you won the first prize in the Proffer Desk competition in 2017. Yes. So sir. what were these competitions? Uh, sir, the Envisage India was the competition. Uh, it was uh, basically non-technical competition. And it was uh, uh, centered around the theme of uh, Dr. Abdul Kalam's vision of India at 2020. So how the electrical engineering people could uh, contribute towards making India uh, renewable India. So that was the competition. So we had to give some ideas how it could be done through the electrical engineering way. And the other one? And the other one was the technical competition, sir. Uh, first one was the technical round of quiz. And the second one was the group discussion, sir. Now you have a very strong technical background. Yes. Science and technology. Yes. Sir. What made you select political science and international relations as your optional paper? Why not something <coughs> from the science stream? Uh, sir, uh, the very first thought was I had uh, studied enough electrical engineering for four years, so I thought it would be a good venture to dwell towards the social sciences field because over the time, sir, I started developing interest in the field of social science. So political science and international relation emerges as one of the interesting uh, subject given its uh, wide coverage, especially in terms of international affairs. Okay. Yes. Surely you would have come across this expression that in international relations there are no permanent friends, there are no permanent enemies, there are only permanent interests. Yes, sir. What are the interests of India which go in the shaping of foreign policy? As you rightly pointed out, sir, there are uh, permanent interests. But I believe, sir, interest also keeps on changing. There is continuity as well as some changes in the interest. One of the interest of India is, sir, the national interest of security. And the second one is... That's the permanent interest. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. And over the time, sir, India aspires to become the rule maker. 
So, it goes on to establish its importance, pre, important presence in various, uh, various groupings like G20, the BRICS associations, the Quad. It is establishing very good relations with Western countries as well as with the non-Western countries like Russia. So, sir, these are the uh, changing interest and evolving interest. But of there India. are certain permanent interests, like, for instance, development. Yes, sir. Your economic interests. Yes, sir. Now, how does India promote its economic interests through foreign policy? Sir, the very first one would be signing of the free trade agreements. And uh, very vociferously, India uh, projects its uh, demands in the World Trade Organizations. Rightly, in the recent ministerial conference, uh, India has put forward its uh, reservations to some of the obligations which were imposed to the Western nations, like the fishery subsidies, like the agricultural agreement. So, I believe, sir, uh, likewise, India projects its uh, economic interest in the international sphere. Uh a little while ago when you answered a question from our chairman about landmarks in Indian foreign policy. Yes, sir. Uh, you mentioned these uh, high achievements through the G20 presidency. Yes, sir. Now, what were the main achievements of India as G20 president? Sir, the very first was sir, the signing of the New Delhi Declaration, which was a consensus document because since many years there was no consensus on some of the issues. And that was, sir, uh, that the present era is not an era of war and India uh, strictly stand against the uh, territorial aggression without naming a particular country. So, that was a kind of achievement for India as well as for Western nations because uh, they thought that it is implicitly pointing towards Russian aggression. At the same time, sir, India went with the uh, India, Indian Middle East Europe Economic Corridor. Uh, that India was, went with that, what does that mean? Uh, sir, uh, the project of uh, connectivity that was put forward by USA, so India Middle East Europe Economic Corridor was agreed by several of the nations. Okay, now starting from India. Yes, sir. How will this corridor connect to Europe? What route will it follow? Uh, so, sir, it, will, it would start from India, go towards the Middle Eastern countries like uh, UAE and Saudi Arabia. Okay, so uh, after it crosses the sea, yes. it will enter land again from which uh, country? Uh, it would be from UAE, sir. From UAE. Then yes. it will cross Saudi. into Saudi Arabia, yes. then? Uh, then it would be uh, Israel, sir. At the but there is no border between South Af Saudi Arabia and Israel. How will it reach Israel? Right now, I'm unable to. You need to, to take a look. Yes, at yes. That. It yes. will go through Jordan. Jordan, and right, that sir. area is conflict ridden now. Right, sir. Uh, Saudi Arabia and UAE are both members of the GCC. Yes, sir. Uh, which are the other members? The other one is sir Qatar, Kuwait, Bahrain, and uh, Iraq. Iraq, Iraq. No, the GCC was set up because the other Gulf countries threatened by Iraq. Iran. The yes. sixth member is Oman. Six member, yes, okay, sir. And uh, uh, what is the reason why GCC countries are very important for India? Sir, the very first is uh, it provides India a uh, passage towards the entering to the markets of the Middle Eastern nations. Uh, and the other one is, sir, the importance of energy security, which is one of the important uh, factor for India because of oil dependence. And the other one is, sir, uh, even the Middle Eastern nation also wants to diversify their economy. And India is being seen as one of the major partner and major growing uh, market. Any other reason why the GCC countries are very important for India? Uh, one reason I am able to recall is, sir, it also goes on to establish uh, presence of India in the Middle Eastern region as one of the major power apart from the Western and the recent Chinese influence. All right, thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Mr. Sarda. Yes. Tell me, in Parliament there are some motions hmm. are mooted. One of them is censor motion and another is no confidence motion. Yes, sir. What are these and what are the difference between the two? Uh, 
sir, the no confidence motion is moved by the uh, parliamentarians when uh, they are completely against some of the policies of the government. And if the no confidence motion is passed, the government of the uh, present incumbent government stands dissolved and there would be new uh, general elections okay. or... Okay, and the censor motion is sir, to censor again some of the ill practices being carried out in the uh, decorum of the house. And it just censors a particular person or the particular member of parliament, but it does not go on to uh, pass a motion to uh, completely evacuate the member. It censors the person or action of the person? Uh, censors the action of the person. Or the policy of the yes. that department or government? Yes, sir. Tell me, what is this? Uh, some edu you are living in Delhi, I think. How long? How uh, long for you have one and a half year now, sir. Okay. So some education reforms have taken place in Delhi. Yes. So what are they? Uh, I'm unable to recall it, so I will read on it. Okay. Yes. Tell me your opinion on the Chief Election Commissioner and Election Commissioner Act which has been passed in the parliament. Yes. What uh, do you think about it? Sir, the act which is passed for conduct of uh, elections and the tenure of the election commissioner, the uh, idea behind the act which was passed, sir, it was to ensure that the uh, particular selection committee is appointed so as to ensure the transparency and the different voices in the appointment of election commissioners. Mm -hmm. But it uh, went on with some of the criticism from uh, various experts and... Now what is your opinion you give? Uh, I believe, sir, uh, I believe, sir, the uh, establishment of selection committee is one of the right step. Uh, but at the same time, it also must ensure that the leader of opposition, whose views uh, are one of the important views, and if there is dissent, so then it should be considered with equal importance uh, rather than completely going against the dissent, sir. How it can be? There are three members, if there is a difference, two members will override the third member? Uh, that's right, sir, because that is the rule of majority. But I believe if the dissent is also considered and there is enough deliberation within the three-member panel, so a proper route of negotiation uh, can be established. Recently, two election commissioners are appointed. Yes, sir. Whether a position member was uh, given this importance which you are telling? Uh, there was, uh, as far as I remember, sir, there was a dissent note from the leader of opposition, uh, but uh, I don't think if, if any action was taken. No action can be taken. You yes. by rule, by it goes by the act, yes. provisions of the act. Yes. It says that majority decision will be the decision. Yes. Sir. So is it fair arrangement or not? Uh, initially, to begin with, sir, it is a fair arrangement, but I believe if the panel could be expanded, uh, so that would be a okay. good opinion. So you are in both the boats. Huh? So tell me, <coughs> food web, what is food web? Uh, sorry sir? Food web. Food web. Mm -hmm. It's a concept in ecology. Yes. yes. Uh, sir, food web goes on to establish the interconnections between different levels of species and different organisms in the hierarchy and ecological system. Mm -hmm. So there is the start from the producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer and the ultimate uh, tertiary consumer, sir. So Who are the yes, tertiary consumers? Uh, tertiary consumers are, sir, uh, humans as well as some of the uh, wasi. Uh, and what happened to the animals. tertiary consumers? Sorry, sir? Who takes care of the tertiary consumers? Uh, Let us say tiger. Yes, sir. Uh, takes care as in, sir? What happens to the tertiary consumer, whether he, that he, consumer is also consumed or not, or it is just keep on lying like that? Uh, sir, after uh, the tertiary consumer dies, the uh, food chain goes on to uh, the, uh, the scavengers, which is vulture, sir. So they scavenges the dead animals and it gets converted Other than vulture, to any, any other organism is there? Uh, so termites and all, I believe. Bacteria, fungi yes. and all those? Yes, sir. Last question is about your... In Delhi, have you travelled by DTC bus? No, sir. Good. There is a free ticket for the women there? Yes, sir. So what is your opinion about that? 
Uh, sir, the idea behind giving the uh, free ticket for women was to ensure that there is a uh, hassle-free commutation of women so as to go on increasing the uh, uh, participation of women in the labor force. But I believe, sir, uh, it cost huge for the Indian exchequer in terms of the freebies, a kind of oh, freebie Indian is exchequer, given. Uh, if at all there is an expenditure, it will be Delhi government. Uh, sir, I believe uh, the expenditure which is done by the government uh, eventually comes from the payment which is given by the taxpayers of the... Delhi, uh, Delhi taxpayers. Uh, yes, sir. So, uh, that would be uh, rather, sir, uh, rather than... How much amount from, is spent? Uh, I am not sure, sir, how much amount is... Then how can you say that heavy expenditure? Uh, if at all, sir, I believe uh, there is a kind of uh, free incentives given. Uh, some or the other person has to pay because there are no free Other lunches. than benefit to those women, that is, there is no doubt about it. Yes, Somebody sir. has to pay. Yes, sir. So, they also pay. Yes. Those who are travelling, they also pay in a different way. Yes. GST is paid by everybody. Yes. Sir. Isn't it? Or any, anybody is there who doesn't pay GST in the country? Uh, sir, GST is an indirect tax, so has to be paid by everybody in everybody. some form or the other. As long as you consume something. Yes. Yes, sir. So, in that case, <laughs> Is there any other advantage of this uh, free travel by women? So let us, I will make it a little more clear. Yes, sir. I want that it should be free for all. No, why only for women? So, what is the advantage other than to those who are traveling? Uh, sir, if at all it is made free for all, so there would be hassle-free commutation, especially from the people uh, coming from marginalized section. So, uh, and apart from that, sir, there would be a uh, push for the utilization of public transport and people would rely less on the personal transportation so that the pollution could be controlled so to is a it specific good? limit. In that case, what is your opinion? Good should be done or not? Uh, I believe, sir, rather than completely going from providing 100% uh, incentives, government should rather go for uh, capacity building and uh, Investing in the social uh, health indicators or the education indicators so as to make. So you don't want the environment should be purified in Delhi. You yourself said that it will be good for environment. Uh, yes, sir, it would be good. Spending money on environment, or buy better spend there in the travel. Uh, I believe, sir, this, uh, the middle path should be uh, found out rather than uh, going on the one. Everything path. Okay. Thank yes. you very much. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Ms. Shalva. Our discussion with you is over. Yes, thank you, sir. Kindly wait outside for a few minutes. We'll call you for a yes. feedback. Thank, thank you, sir. You. Oh.